We have a fun show today. We're diving into some spooky, unsolved mysteries of the fantasy football world, things that are perplexing everyone out there. We're going to try to get to the bottom of them. We've got Ride or Die in the show today as well, and we're previewing the Thursday night game. Make sure you subscribe right here, like the video, leave a comment, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Hey, this is Austin Eckler, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. A little show intro from Between the Twenties back, Austin Eckler. <sighs> don't say that. <laughs> I mean, it's true, but don't say uh, Don't Wait. say that, Mike. Don't say it's true. <laughs> I mean, it's probably... Better. Okay, only according to measurable statistics, it's true. Thank you. But Not in, according in, to our hearts. In our hearts, he is what he was last year. Yeah, I mean, I take the same approach with Kyle Pitts. In my heart, he, he has been targeted he- 14 to 18 times due to his obvious physical advantages. No head coach would be so ridiculously, uh, you know, wouldn't even up the Kaderil Hodge, Kyle Pitts targets. No coach would do that. Of course. I mean, because you're trying to win. Because you're trying to win the game. Wednesday, September 21st, welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Sandy, Mike, and Jason back with you. A lot going on today. We have... NFL news to talk about, ride or die on the show today. Some unsolved mysteries we're going to uh, explore. Thursday night preview already. We're already back into the another, another week of it's, football. It's great. It's Groundhog Day again. Are we expecting big things from the uh, Cleveland-Pittsburgh uh, offensive uh, sides it, of the ball? It was a lot better game like a year ago. I had a note from a, a Steeler fan saying, why is Mitch – throwing like Ben <laughs> uh, uh well I don't think the offensive line was like we had hopes you're like because you're entering the year things could be better they're not so Mitch Trubisky is dealing with everything like and Ben Ben is on the couch Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio pointing at the screen going that's why I retired yeah you didn't it's fi- fix it's it. fair a uh, couple of updates here want to announce the current megalable leader oh is it me it is not you, Jason. Jeem, 213, sitting at 4-0. and Now, if you are like, 4-0? and Yeah. How is that possible? It's only week three. This year in the Mega Bowl, you have one matchup against your opponent, and you have a, another simultaneous matchup against the league median score. Uh, just to add another wrinkle into the mix as people fight for the Mega Bowl playoffs, which, Jason, I think you are in the playoffs. I am in the playoffs. I am also 4-0, and but I do not have 396 points like Gene 213. Wow. So Impressive. Keep, keep fighting, everybody. It, it's going all the way till the uh, till the normal, regular playoff weeks start, um, and the top three in every league will move on. So it doesn't matter where you're at right now. You've got plenty of time to get uh, get into the playoffs. And where do they see the entire leaderboard? Just megalobowl.com. Uh, if you go there, that's the easiest way to see the rules, see any announcements, and then you can click on the standings and look at basically the standings right now. If you are on that page, and there's a lot, I think there's you know 5,000-plus teams that are in the playoffs um, you could search your uh, name on that and see if you're currently in. The fantasy football community, now over 30,000 strong at jointhefoot.com. Check that out for a bonus weekly show, premium perks, resources, tools, everything on the website that you see under the Foot Clan section is available to you. Our people. Our people. They're good people. Oh, they're the best people. And then, uh, as we mentioned yesterday, we're giving away some signed – Sports memorabilia, Jalen Waddle, Jalen Hurts. I, not all Jalens, though. DJ Moore crashing the party. Well, the, it's it's D. Jalen. Oh, is it? No. Okay. Well, thanks, It could Mike. be right now, though. We're also giving away a virtual studio tour. You can hang out with us on Zoom. We'll show you around uh, Deucer's Alley and such. So, footclangiveaway.com. Let's get it going. Ride or die. 
presented by Chevrolet. Last week on Ride or Die, Jason it took was, it home. It was pure death. <laughs> die, die, die. He went die. die, die, die on all three predictions. Hollywood Brown uh, as a top 15 wide receiver. Didn't happen. Was wide receiver 35. Aaron Jones with more opportunities than A.J. Dillon. I don't like that one very much. That one, Dillon, Dillon had the much more inferior fantasy output, yep. but it was, I didn't even realize this. It's three more total opportunities than Aaron Jones, Jason Got that right as well. And then DJ Moore with at least 68 receiving yards. Mike, you chose to believe you were proven stupid. I, <laughs> well, I mean, if you could go back and check the tape, it was not a uh, a belief in my core. It was really just, try I was working on the secret. I was trying to put that thing out in the universe. He, for, got, a, he got a touchdown. For fantasy football players. He did. Just doesn't go to the yardage. Can yeah. I can I bring up our discussions about DJ Moore this morning, Jason? Yeah. So Jason, oh, yeah, cat's, well, out of, cat's out of the bag now. This one's new for me. Well, Jason, just <laughs> I just love the innocence of this. He he tried to cash in on the big DJ Moore game. Well, he oh, got a, humongous! Yeah, the huge. <laughs> the fact that 40, he got forty three yards and a touchdown. The fact that he got a touchdown. I sent out about. 12 trade offers last night what with league is this the league of record oh the, no, no this the, league the, of record the, our, okay. our, main, oh. our main league of record i sent out okay. about 12 trade offers that were all pretty much dj moore plus a player for a slight upgrade on that other player and i mean they were just insta rejected <laughs> ain't nobody want dj moore right like, now. like do people have filters for their just in their trade folder that if a DJ Moore offer comes in it's just it's yeah. sent to spam no 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 they they it actually gets rejected they have oh it's just an auto they have reject. an auto reject okay. bot that okay just that's sure. funny the idea of having <laughs> auto rejections with players I want to be able to you know customize the language sent back DJ yeah. Moore I pass uh, but no you oh didn't. wait and we got Al Borland is spilling the tea he's he's screenshotting your conversations. Oh no! Why did, did, you, I, Al, did I talk the, him up? Al, what was dirt. your what was your trade? And tell me how good DJ Moore is based on Jason's analysis. It, it it was just a comment where I told him I couldn't do the trade because I'd be giving up a keeper uh, or franchise player. Um, and he, and he said, "Well, you wouldn't you wouldn't keep DJ Moore." And he was he's really laying on the sales <laughs> pitch thick. So I'm just saying, I think he's still probably keeper worthy for He's such a good keeper that you – not for your roster. No, not for my roster. My roster yeah. is great. Yeah, I'm saying for his roster. Oh, the fun of trading. All right, week three ride or die predictions. I'm helping you. This is I, I can barely take on this loss, but I'm willing to do it. <laughs> um, also, side note, DJ Moore, have a big week. <laughs> yes. You need more than one week to get the, the exactly. trade done. I need, I need two two weeks, and then I can you ship need you to. off. Yeah. I like the two weeks isn't going to convince you he's good for your roster. It's going to mm -hmm. get him to the point where you can I've ship him off. i enough, Baker. Uh, we are actually getting all the more close to the deucer cam becoming a reality. It's not ready yet. We need lighting. They're just they're in the dark right now. You ever tried to set up a camera in an alley? <laughs> Difficult. <laughs> yeah, I can see the cam right now. It, it so, the camera exists. I, I say all that because oh, Brooks, Brooks that. is going to be uh, setting up our week three ride or die predictions. Brooks, what do you got for us? All right, guys. Christian Kirk at the Chargers, fifteen fantasy points in half PPR scoring. Week one against Washington was fourteen point seven points. Week two against Indianapolis, 22.8 points. I'm actually going to go die on this one. I think he's going to have a down week against this Charger secondary. Yeah, I, I'm uh, right there with you. I think uh, he's going to require a touchdown to hit that level of fantasy points in this game. This matchup isn't the best out of the slot, and that's where he's just been crushing it. So I will continue last week's uh, diathon and uh, continue. <laughs> yeah, it, that's a... I'll complete the sweep here. It's it, I'm scared of the slot, uh, the slot defense from the Los Angeles Chargers. Well, they, we, they shut it down. Do we need to change the line then? I mean, do we want to go to twelve? Would that change anybody's opinion if we went to twelve? Fantasy points. I mean, that would put him in a low wide receiver two range, probably. I I'll buy ten. You want to move it to ten and still uh, still take? It's gonna be hard for me not to buy ten. <laughs> Let's move it to 12 for sure. All right. Formal move to 12. Okay. I'm still going to die. I am as well. <laughs> Fine. I'm, I will believe. All right. I will, everybody, I will believe. All right. I was Four ready years. at 11. I was, I was ready to move it to 11 and buy. 
All right, Brooks, what is our second ride or die? All right, guys. Both Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers will finish outside the top 12 Ooh. quarterbacks this week See, I in the same game. I love how this is worded because now I get to ride. It's still negative, right? Because you're saying that they're going to finish outside, which I believe. I don't think either one oh, is a top 12 quarterback this week. It's a double week. negative. It's a double <laughs> negative. So I get to, I get to ride, baby. Um, and still be negative because I, now in my rankings, I currently have them as the quarterback 13 and 14. So they are barely outside of it, but this is a game where I, I see two good defenses, two struggling offenses, especially with the injuries and suspensions on, uh, the Buccaneers side. So I'm, I'm not expecting this to be a barn burner. So I pretty much agree. I'm going to ride on the fact that they're both be outside the top 12. I think Tampa's given up one total touchdown in two weeks. So I don't think Aaron's going to get was, there. What was week one for the Bucs? Like Cowboys? Cow okay. Man, I mean. With Dak. It, yeah, but Dak played, what, half the game? No, most of it. Most was of it at the very end? It was, yeah, yeah I think fourth okay. quarter. That being said, last week was, was a broken back. broken back Jameis Winston. So I'm I going to. Yeah, I mean. I'm trying to talk about. Oh, I, I think that one of them can finish in the top 12. So I will, I will uh, die, which is positive in this instance, That's right. right? That's right. Yeah, okay. thank All you. Right. Uh, one more, Brooksy. All right, guys. Miles Sanders at Washington, 70 or more rushing yards. I'm going to ride, baby. Yeah. This Miles is just Sanders looks great. Pure positivity. If you're talking just rushing yards, eh, oh, man, it's not total yards. I thought it was total yards. Um, I'm still gonna ride. I think jump that, in. Yeah, I'm 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 jumping in. Uh, I love that it's not a fantasy finish necessarily because the touchdowns are hard to come by. Uh, for running backs, when Jalen Hurts can run all the touchdowns in, I'll go die. I don't think Miles gets to 80 in this one. He was 80 on the dot, I believe, in this last game. He was 80 uh, in game two, 96 in week one. Yeah, I think um, I think I'll go with die on this one. Miles Sanders has looked great, but that's a pretty good bar. Yeah. Not only, I mean, he's he's looked fantastic, and he's also like last week against Minnesota, seventy four percent of the running back attempts. Like that's what we need for Miles Sanders. You give him that work in this Eagles offense, and if they keep cooking the way that they have been, I mean, Miles Sanders is going to be a, a tremendous running back. Today. And against Washington, who right now the the Chase Youngless version of this Manders defense is. Horrible. It's, it's also, the Chase Young version of the Manders defense last year was horrible. That's also yeah, that's true. true. They uh, were better the second half of the year than the first half, though, last year. That was Ride or Die presented by Chevy Silverado. You can learn more about Chevy Silverado at Chevy.com. News and notes from around the league presented by USAA Insurance. Well... The NFL has upheld Mike Evans' one-game suspension. He had tried to appeal it. I'm shocked. <laughs> So, on, on what grounds would you ever win this appeal? I mean, if you can convince him it's Tom Brady's fault. I mean, it's just like you came off the sideline and smashed a dude. <laughs> uh, Mike Evans, what is your defense? It was not me. <laughs> uh, your Honor. Your Honor. Check the camera. Not That's not me. That was I was in the locker room. <laughs> Uh, someone oh, else me. that looks very similar. Tom Brady testifies for him. No, that was not him. Yeah. Someone grabbed my jersey. I uh, love that you blame, blame Brady oh. for Mike Evans making a physical attack of Marcus Lattimore. It is not Brady's fault whatsoever, not I, even 1%. I Oh, it's, it's definitely in the low percentile. I said Mike Evans needs to control himself, but Tom Brady started a fight. And Tom Mike, Brady started yelling. That's normal on the field. Not like that. You need to watch it again. I, that, Mike Evans is a feisty fellow. Mike Evans That's his used, own fault. Mike Evans used the fact that it was Tom Brady as an excuse to yep. get to go blindside Lattimore. That he was did. not Brady's doing. That was frustration over years. I mean, this is like the third time that he's not only like gone after Lattimore, but each time has been like a blindside. <laughs> he uh, he can't get the best of Lattimore when he's looking. Yeah, he's going to lose That's a lot true. of money. Right? Is he? He'll, use, he'll lose a game yeah, check yes, for the suspension. Will. I uh, think he's got a lot of money already. I'm just saying he wants to hit Lattimore so badly <laughs> that he's willing to, like, cut a check. Did you hear his defense? It wasn't him. <laughs> like, if you had a thing on Amazon that was like, push Marcus Lattimore, 
and it cost him five hundred grand or five hundred thousand dollars. He'd be like prime in that. He'd buy. I'd take three. So I yeah. said, is that same day? I just I get I'll shocking. Cannot control himself. Uh, Marlon Mack has been brought up from the practice squad for the 49ers. Of this course. is not a, an endorsement of Marlon Mack, but a, an ordering of the depth chart now, which goes Jeff Wilson, Jordan Mason, Marlon Mack. Maybe. Kyle I mean, Juszczyk. Yeah, Kyle Juszczyk yeah. will do he what he's always juice, done. Juice is probably um, the two. I, it's still Jeff Wilson and then a huge tear break. The fact that they brought up um, Marlon Mack it, it just worries me a little bit that we won't see as much Jordan Mason as I want to see. You could Jordan, see Mac. It, that Mac will kind of just be, be the the give the guy the breather while Jordan Mason sticks to his special teams role. We'll, we'll have possible. to wait and see. Yes. It's definitely possible. And uh, we had 14 touches, I believe, by Ty Davis Price last week. So there will be a change of pace, not Jeff Wilson type of situation. Just don't know exactly who it is. I would not. Like, are you adding Marlon Mack the way you'd be no. adding Jordan Mason? No, okay. not at all. Uh, I mean, it's Mason so represents a kind of young upside, you know, unknown Elijah Mitchell world. Exactly right. The, if if the opportunity goes to like if Jeff Wilson gets injured, even if Marlon Mack is the clear backup in this game and and Jordan Mason is relegated to special teams, I will not pick up Marlon Mack in that situation. I would go after Jordan Mason because the explosiveness that they need for this offense is not with Marlon Mack. Marlon Mack is just simply a veteran to give a breather to someone right now. I was going to say, if, if it's a super, super deep league, then I'm throwing him on the back of the bench. Marlon Mack in your dynasty leagues might be on your waiver wire right now. And uh, the percentage chance that he is has any value is like under 1%. But, I mean, in certain leagues, I think that there is a place for him. To be stashed. That's the same amount as Brady's culpability. Yeah. I got you. It's over zero, but it's <laughs> under one. <laughs> all right. All right. Seahawks head coach, uh, liar Pete Carroll, said the team <laughs> needs to open up the passing attack. <laughs> it's just, he's just trolling. Yeah. He's trolling Russell Wilson right now. I mean, they said basically one of the ways he described opening up the passing attack is one that all fantasy players would endorse, which is he said they need to throw the ball down the field to DK Metcalf. Because we've kind of mocked the stat lines for DK in terms of total yardage based on targets. Uh, they do play Atlanta at home this week. It is a, it's the ultimate buy low for DK Metcalf right now. So I don't really think Metcalf can get worse. When you talk about four quarters of football, they do have to throw the football some. I don't think Metcalf can be worse than now. So I, don't, I do think that he is an interesting uh, buy low candidate. I really do. I I don't know what you'll expect to get out of him necessarily, but you know what he is physically. You know he's not going to go the whole season without scoring. Right. And so let me I let me not, ask you, DJ Moore. DJ Moore. Would you that. swap him for DK Metcalf? Not no, DJ Moore. Okay, no. let me lower that tier for you. Would you swap um, Adam Thielen for DK Metcalf? Yes. yes. Elijah Moore for DK Metcalf? No. No. I would do that. Um. Any of the rookies for DK Metcalf? No, no. Darnell Mooney for DK Metcalf? Oh yeah, oh I certainly. Mean, the I mean, waiver for yeah. DK Metcalf? <laughs> Absolutely. Hunter Renfro or Devonte Smith? Not Devonte oh, Smith. Not, yeah, and not Smith. Renfro. Well, See, I think I, I would. Uh, I put Metcalf okay. way above those tiers. R Renfro, um, I I would. Renfro's not getting the same level of targets, and he's still a, a close to the line of scrimmage. So I would go Metcalf over Renfro. Terry McLaurin. I'll take Terry. Same. The, uh, what it will be interesting is. Geno Smith has been managing the games, and it, Carol. Okay, we want to open it up. Can Geno really open it up? Like, if you go back to that world of the deep passing, are the interceptions just going to skyrocket? Flow. Yeah, skyrocket, and then Pete Carroll will say, "Whoa, whoa, we need to we need to bring it back to what we were doing in the beginning." Yeah, I don't I don't see DK Metcalf as a buy low for season long fantasy. I do think this is a good opportunity to have a good game. The matchup looks beatable. They're talking about getting him more involved downfield. So you got to do one of two things, either use him in like a DFS lineup. If he's, I, I don't know his current value, uh, but if it's low enough, then he could end up being well worth that value. Or if you do trade for him, pennies on the dollar and he has a good week, I am turning around and flipping him. Okay. Mike McCarthy, head coach of the Cowboys says Michael Gallup will take a full slate of reps this week, Monday night. Looking like a good possibility for the return of Michael Gallup. Okay. You are going to watch from the sidelines as a fantasy player in this one. That's what I would do. Uh, because you have Cooper Rush, 
trying to distribute the ball to a, a number of targets. It's just not a high upside situation. And is Michael Gallup really ready to go? I mean, the it's you have the, the, the re-injury possibility like that happened to Chris Godwin, and maybe that had nothing to do with his ACL, but it's certainly a giant coincidence that they rushed a guy back onto the field comparatively to the normal ACL recovery timeline, and he immediately hurt a a a muscle that's in the same area as his hurt knee. So I'm I'm not playing Gallup yet. I knew, I want to actually see it. We we talked about stashing him, but I need to see it before I. Jason, actually play you agree? Him. You're not saddling yourself to that situation. Yeah, I'm gonna no. I'm gonna I'm gonna ride uh I'm gonna ride uh, along the sideline on on go. that one. Okay, that's more of a trot. Yeah, like a little, uh, you know, just a little Ooh. gallop. Isn't there a special word for like a little slow horse gallop? Uh, I mean, uh, maybe trot is the word. Yeah, sounds yeah, like trot. trot. Okay. All right. I don't know if there's a special one for like the DeAndre trot the high is legs. That, should we have gone? Uh, I mean, a, a trot is a little bit of a show off, though. You got, you got to have canter. You what about a canter? Mm, meander? No, that, no, that's, that's too slow. too close to manders. <laughs> All right, that was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break, and then we're back with some unsolved Ooh. mysteries. <laughs> Breaking news, a three-beat gait of a horse or other quadruped between a trot and a gallop is called a canter. Okay. okay. Whew, so it's goodness. it's still getting the wait. So yeah. you're still getting that. Yeah, yeah. I think that's too fast. I mean, if you're still if you're still getting that the the triple hoof action, you got too much. Do speed. we expect? Clop. <laughs> you think he's in a canter mode right now on the I, recovery? I think that's too fast. You think it's a trot right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Too hot to. Yeah, it's too hot to trot. We're yeah. we're really special. Look, not show. a horse person. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, let's let's get into unsolved mysteries. Unsolved mysteries. This one's very important. And and <laughs> why is that, Andy? Well, <laughs> it's important for 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 like layer after layer of of reasons. The number one unsolved mystery right now in fantasy football is the usage of Kyle Pitts. Um, that was the top reply on Twitter when we asked for some suggestions here for this segment. In two games, he has 10 total targets, four receptions, 38 receiving yards. He was the number seven fantasy tight end last year. Uh, I think he was at 68 receptions. And the underlying metrics for Kyle Pitts are very strong, mm -hmm. which you know is the kind of thing that people that want to rationalize believing in him are going to lean on because that's what we do. We need to find the reason to continue to lean on it. 88% of snaps ran her out on 82% of Marcus Mariota dropbacks. Um, his snaps where he's lining up 40 in line, 38 in the slot, 38 out wide, two in the backfield, two offensive line snaps. He's on the field constantly. And so we are looking at, a tight end landscape that has basically no options, right? A lot, you have a couple of categories. You have the uh, retread. Uh, I'm going to try to play them and get some points, which is what I put Higby Higby into for sure. Um, Injoku can kind of slide into that. Conklin can slide into that. Hawkinson. <laughs> wow. Still feeling wow. it. Wow. Yeah. He's really gone. He's into the retread. He's gone full yes. turd. You tell you tell me what the difference between. T.J. Hawkinson and Tyler Higby is nothing. Nothing. Well, I mean points because well, Higby's sure, uh, yeah, points. Higby's dominating. <laughs> but you don't have a landscape where like high upside pivots exist, and so you know my my advice. And I, I did an AMA last night, and unfortunately, about half the questions were Kyle Pitts related. I, and every one of my answers is you just play Kyle Pitts. I do think that there's going to be a market correction target wise. If you look at the full quote, we mocked the quote from Arthur Smith. Saying, you know, uh, basically it's not fantasy football. We're just trying to win. The whole quote said this. Kyle is a huge part of our offense. You have to take it with context. Other guys made plays. It's not fantasy football. We're trying to win. We will continue to look at everything and try to get better. See, so there's a squeaky wheel part of this universe, too. From Even from the criticism of the outside media 
when Kaderil Hodge is getting the same targets well, as Kyle Pitts. Yeah, I mean that uh, this is part of the full quote because that was uh, the other part of it was talking about how you know he would take guys away and open things up for Hodge and you know uh, plays like that. And it's like that is not how you want a guy that is that highly drafted, that special of a physical human being to be utilized in this uh, in this game plan and you know right now it seems like he is with Mariota Mariota's not a uh, one two three four read type quarterback Mariota right. is designed on plays they're running the ball a lot in neutral game scripts which is completely not surprising coming into this year from last year we talked about this already that was how Arthur Smith you know he thought he still had Derrick Henry and was running the Titans again um but when he doesn't, you know, he's got to play action. He's got his one read, and it seems like it's Drake London, and then things don't go well. And for the amount of routes and utilization Kyle Pitts is getting, he's not getting the targets. And when he does, it's usually like a deep bomb. He drew a, a pass interference this last week, valuable for the team, but not valuable for fantasy. So, I, I mean, I completely agree that if you have Kyle Pitts, the only thing you can do is ride it out. But I'm really lacking belief that it's going to – ever pay off on the draft capital of a third rounder like that's you're, you'll have weeks but it's he's basically the most expensive decoy of all time that's what's going on yeah they so Mariota right now on non-play action passes Mariota is grading out in the bottom five per PFF's metrics uh his passing grade in yards per attempt and Mike Clay had over at ESPN had tweeted out you know he went and he watched everything and, he's, and he says in his opinion it looks like Kyle Pitts doesn't seem to be the number one read very often, so I think that, and we're we're all feeling that, and like that's the issue with Arthur Smith having this quote. Like he was a top five pick in the NFL. He Kyle Pitts. He can do things that no other tight end in the league can do, and you aren't formulating a game plan to really involve him. Like you need to force touches to him you need to scheme things to him he has and, been targeted zero times on his 16 out wide situations that's ridiculous so th th there is this seems owing to so adjustments will be made but i think everything you guys have said is is right on the nose it actually felt has felt through two weeks a lot like it felt for Allen robinson in week one in los angeles never the first read on the field the entire game running rounds right. Winning at different levels, but not, you know, if you're not being looked at by the quarterback, it doesn't really matter. So, I, and it's one of the, like, a big problem here for Kyle Pitts is perhaps Drake London just is that good. Like, through, through these first two weeks, Drake London, for two games of a rookie career, like, he's playing out of his mind. The, the, the target share, I don't have it in front of me, but he's, his targets per route run is, elite his target share is elite and maybe that's th that's part of the issue here is I mean I, I don't think Arthur's a good coach I think there's bad coaching plus Drake London is so good that he is forcing things away from Kyle um, Pitts let me ask you a question Andy you you have Kyle Pitts if you could move Kyle Pitts for a tight end like a Dallas Goddard or a Pat Fryermuth plus like you were able to add a a Jeff Wilson or a you know a, a Damian Harris, someone like that, a running back plus a tight end that currently looks good but not great but not bad, um, <laughs> better than what you've got for Pitts. Would you make that deal to try to capitalize on the name, or are you staying like you're just you're the captain of the ship? <laughs> well, it's been an look, honor. It's, it's it's two weeks into the season. I think of the names you mentioned, Dallas Goddard, I would do that for. Uh, my thought process with the tight end position, how I have traditionally done it, is I I believe it is, you know, you're, you're kind of throwing darts when you're looking at low-tier tight ends and the potential for three or four touches. You pray for a, a touchdown. I want my tight end position to have the potential to be a league or a weak winning position. Mm -hmm. I think Goddard can weak, win you a week because of a big performance. I don't think you're going to have almost any of those from those other names that you mentioned. So if if I'm getting Goddard plus for Kyle Pitts, which I think would probably be a hard sell right now in a league, yeah. I would do that. 
because I like what I've seen from Jalen Hurts in that offense. But Well, who's better rest of season? Dallas Goddard or Kyle Pitts? I have no way to know that. And that is there's no <laughs> certain No, I just mean there's no, no certainty very, on it. Sure. I mean, who's better rest of the season? Do you know for sure? I, no one knows for sure, but uh I mean, like I, what are you, what asking, would you be laying your bet on there? I mean, I think it's 50-50 on those guys. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think it's Which is, is enough reason there. to trade. Exactly. But I I do think that Pitts is going to be better than Fryermuth. And, you know, Pitts was remember, Pitts was the number 7 tight end last year with one touchdown on the season. Now that might happen again. He may have none. But the hope is that you can get the kinds of weeks you get from Mark Andrews where he's got a nine target week and it's eight for 101. Um, but that's, that's just where I'm at. I mean, how many, so we're at, I mean, uh, he's, he's very uh, consistent. At least he's given you two for 19, but through the first two weeks, I want to see. So looking at his game log real quick, last year you have two games two games where he was under 20 yards and one week uh, we got week eight versus Carolina and then the, the final week of the season where I think he got hurt during that game I, I'm so gonna, we're, we're off to a bad start I'm gonna give it one more week I will give you Hawkinson straight up who's oh, been sure dominating Kyle should, Pitts compared to Kyle Pitts Pitts did have seven targets in week one he just caught two of them so it, there's a Marcus Mariota problem there's an Arthur Smith problem and uh He's not an alpha personality that's going to go out there in the media and say, where are my touches? He's going to say, I'm going to do whatever it takes to win. And, and he even said, he's like, I'm not getting frustrated. The nice right. thing is they're losing. And I, I mean that genuinely. Yes. Like, no, I if, agree. It, it's always frustrating when a game plan is not going how fantasy football analysts, managers, players feel like it should be going, but the team is winning. Because like, you can't really argue against it. You know, I, I, I was watching uh, Kadarius Tony in the locker room talk about how like, you know, are you sad you only touched the ball twice? He's like, I don't care. Twice, once, we won the game. Like, that's all that matters. It's like, ah, you should be upset. But <laughs> part of the losing, which is the was in the, the, the discussions all off seasons, if they keep losing, Desmond Ritter will go in for the Atlanta Falcons at some point. So upgrade, great, I hear you. Great. I mean, <laughs> I don't, I, I don't Mario know if that's been, great. Mario has been fine for this system. Yeah, I, 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 I don't I mean, know. he doesn't have enough talent on both sides of the ball to win most games. If Desmond games. Ritter comes in, it's not going to get worse than two catches for Kyle Pitts. Sure, but it's I, I think that if when if Ritter comes in, the probability that things get to where there's a true ceiling for Kyle Pitts and it's not just you're really happy that he got four for 40, uh, I think that when Ritter comes in, that, that just squelches that out. I'm going full f one strike, two strike, three strike situation here. Okay. So what? What is your? Uh, what's your plan after three strikes? Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, the Bengals <laughs> offense. Let's go to unsolved. That's. I mean, that's my plan for most things. <laughs> right. No. I mean, if if it doesn't work out, then yeah, there's going to be a huge problem. Do you know how freaked out I was about you know Mike Williams, Allen Robinson having sure. a second strike? That just doesn't. It wouldn't be good. It would be bad for the psyche. It would be bad for the intrinsic, deep-rooted belief about what's going to transpire on the field. I mean, all we're doing here is making predictions based off of data and information. Sure. We can't play the plays. We can't call them for Arthur Smith. But the, the ability and talent of Kyle Pitts is superior to almost any athletic specimen in that position in the league, and he's running a lot of routes, and, just, I'm, and I'm hoping he gets a lot more targets this so week. So wild. Because, look, Arthur. They're going to run you out of town if you don't figure this out. And it, you, I would ride or die that he gets seven targets this week. I would ride that. Okay, seven plus. Seven plus. I mean, he he should. That's like, now whether he can. Now, you know, are they good <laughs> targets? Are they Mariota moon well, balls? I mean, yeah, ride or die. Two receptions on no. those seven targets. Well, I'll right. take no, the two, I, but move that line up to five. No, it's. Yeah, I'm willing to make any blind bets on Kyle Pitts in the positive fashion if anybody wants them. <laughs> no. I feel obligated to them. All right, second unsolved mystery, the Bengals' offense and their offensive line woes. We're talking about things that are impacting Burrow, Mixon, Chase, Higgins. This offense, the only reason Hayden Hurst has targets right now is because this offensive line has been atrocious. I mean, they are um, – <laughs> This is a problem, and I know, Mike, you have been victory lapping. Uh, I have not been victory lapping. You have been, you have been doing uh, a skip around the office on Snowboro. I've it's uh, just a 
a minor, eh, minor, minor smirk. Minor, eh, I mean, this is kind of what, do, what we were talking about, is he has to be historically great if he's going to pay off at that draft price. <laughs> There's a tone. He's got a tone. I, look, that's why I say it's mild. It, you, are, you, got, you can smell some vindication in the air. A little bit. All right. I'm far more excited about the Taysom Hill stuff. <laughs> but right now. Because <laughs> I like Joe Burrow. I want Joe Burrow to be good. Jason, what's going on and is it going to change? I mean, this, this, these were not opponents that you expected them to have a problem producing for your fantasy team against. Yeah, I mean, they, they obviously knew last year that they needed to solve the offensive line. They went out and they did that on paper. And they did not do that at all in reality. <laughs> so this is a problem they've already been trying to address. And when it goes wrong, when you're trying to address it, I lack confidence that all of a sudden it will get fixed. Now, better? Sure. Fixed? I don't think so. I think this is going to be another year where Joe Burrow leads the league in sacks. And some of that, like you brought up yesterday, Andy, we talked about it before, sacks are uh, they're a quarterback stat. Um, obviously, the offensive line plays into that, but quarterbacks cause a lot of their own sacks. And so, yeah, I'm I'm I am worried. Um, not long term. I think Joe Burrow's great. I you know I traded away Joe Burrow uh, in a dynasty in a yesterday. dynasty yesterday. Saw that. But um, it's not because I think he's not going to come to uh, having it's, a great career. It's just weird analysis. You're like, I think Joe, Joe Burrow's really, really great. I just want to throw out that. I in a dynasty league, I, did I got him rid in of a him. Dynasty league. Yeah. yeah, my my point is, I am, but he's really good. I am worried in the near term. <laughs> okay, for okay. him being what the hope of it's his one of my favorite superstardom uh, of of that actually being able to come to fruition. I love banking at this bank. I did move my money into another <laughs> bank, but this bank. It takes good care of your money. I just wouldn't do it myself. <laughs> I, I Look, um, my next question for you, Jason, was going to be more focused on this season as a, as a whole. Because in my opinion, Burrow, who you, who you got top dollar for in my opinion, Mixon, Chase, and Higgins in trade will get ex almost exactly what you would get preseason, in my opinion. Oh, just yeah, looking yeah. at the market, yes. they all have the exact same value. You're not you're not getting anybody panicking in the streets about Mixon, Higgins, Chase. So, is there actionable fantasy advice for somebody that is looking at the offensive line? You said it's probably not going to get fixed this year. You know, was T. Higgins drafted at a point where that ceiling is not available to him, or is Joe Mixon somebody that you would go out and let me give you an example: pursue a DeAndre Swift in a Joe Mixon trade, simply on the basis of how bad this team has been post Super Bowl. Um, I, you know, if you aim high enough, I think I, I'm fine with that. I would only aim for the stars. They're playing the Jets this week, and I expect things will get, at the very least, if not better this season, better this week. Uh, Joe Mixon should be a great play this week, and I doubt that Burrow's taken five or six sacks in this matchup. So, um, you know, if you want higher trade capital the the following three weeks the dolphins the ravens the saints that looks a little bit dicier but but so right what is that record for the Bengals through seven weeks yeah it, i mean it could get a little bit they did lose to the jets last year the super bowl hangover well i mean the yeah the jets beat the titans last year too There's, it's a wild world this nfl but um i i expect the Bengals to handle the Jets. An interesting stat here for the for the Bengals in 2021, 78% of their snaps they were a three or more wide receiver set. That's up to 92% this year. So that is that's something that could change and you get more uh you bring the beef to the offensive line, you get some tight ends well, out there for some blocking. I don't remember if it was Kyle you mentioned this or somebody else, uh, but a lot of talk about Joe Burrow basically asking for more wide receivers, nobody in the backfield to help chip and putting himself in a position to get sacked more often because, you know, he wants to open things up. He asked for empty sets this past game. He went against Zach Taylor. So, I mean. I mean, you could still do an empty set and have more blockers on the line. Yeah, but it, you don't have a running back there to chip a blitz yes. and he's getting destroyed. So, um, panic button. I don't think we're saying panic button. No, not yet. But uh, look. 
You lose this week against the Jets. You're 0-3 with the matchups Jason just talked about. This might be the one time that you, you know, could super cash in on some names. Well, the the thing is, like, Joe Burrow was the only Bengal where I was actually concerned about the draft price because in a in a one quarterback league, I, I won't rehash all the stuff, but like Mixon has still been great. He was mm -hmm. a top ten play the week one with no touchdowns. He was top twenty this past week with no touchdowns. Jamar Chase and T. Higgins have flip flopped who was great between the two weeks. And that's going to happen if, like, look at their last, you know, stretch of games, 10 or games uh, or so that they've played together. Their targets are very, very equal. So it's, yeah, sometimes both of them will have the good game, but more often than not, it'll just, one of them will have the great game and, and the other one will be just okay. So I'm still completely all in on the weapons. It, the, the sacks don't matter to me uh, when it comes to that. Auto starting Joe Burrow right now? Because, I mean, where you drafted him, you viewed him as your – Main quarterback, not Man. a streaming kind of player. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's either. Whereas so Carson Wentz is out there with back-to-back -back QB3 finishes. Oh, it's so gross. I'm not uh, starting Carson Wentz over, over Burrow this week. Okay. I am not either. But this could be a three strikes, and you need to put Burrow on the bench. Another unsolved mystery. Russell Wilson. <laughs> Let's ride. Russell Wilson. <laughs> Let's idle. Yeah, this has been ugly. Through two weeks, the quarterback 14 and quarterback 22. Uh, that is a far cry from when Peyton Manning arrived in Denver and took the league by storm. And I think we all know why that is. That's because Russell Wilson doesn't have Adam Gase. That's right. Oh, yeah. Right. I didn't put that together. Yeah, that's the real – he's missing that crucial piece. Now, right now, Russell Wilson, we're looking at the situation, we're saying – they have yet to figure it out. There have been, if you watch these two games, the thing that stuck out to me the most is momentum. You you have kind of, um, you know, to use that car analogy that you said, let's idle. It has been stop start. It has been, this play looks good. Um, we're, we're running the football well. We can't finish the drive. We're moving it down the field. We have time management issues. Russ doesn't have weapons beyond Cortland Sutton right now. And nothing seemed fluid to me. So, when you look at the situation, the question for fantasy players, will he turn it around? And are you relying on him right now? Or are you waiting with him on your bench? Uh, I, I do think he turns it around. Am I relying on him right now? No. I would rather have him be on the bench, especially not knowing exactly the health of Jerry Judy. I think if it's Cortland Sutton and a bunch of Jags, then you're probably not going to get enough and out that's of the Carson Wentz question then. Carson Wentz or Russell Wilson? You can also do that with Tua, who is the number one start set on our does he website. Play the Bills this week. He does. Is that, yeah, no, but it's thank like you. Tua. Tua Russell Wilson is the number one start sit question because if you have Russ, you feel this all the more. Sure, you're sitting there and you've gotten below average performances, and Tua's sitting there having you know dominated last week. Yeah, I I would play Carson Wentz over Russell Wilson this week, um, not knowing the health of Jerry Judy, seeing that he's. Is that, what about Tua? Um, you, know, you can't just judo throw that question out of here. No, I'll, I'll go to it as well. That, that one, that one is definitely scary based on how the Bills' defense has been, and you wonder can anyone do it against the Bills? But if you're if you are down against the Bills and you have Jalen Waddle and you have Tyree Kill and you have to throw, I I do think that they will that that Tua will have a good game. Okay. The San Francisco 49ers, I believe, are one and a half point road favorites. Yes. Against Denver. So that's, I mean, that tells you a lot about where these teams are right now. Sure. Denver is not in a position of power. San Francisco's got a good defense. So I think that difference in defense there, I would go to as well. The So if you zoom out and look at just what everything that's going on with the Denver Broncos through the two weeks, inside of the red zone, things have been wacky like abnormal where so through two weeks every quarterback who has six passing attempts in the red zone they have at least one touchdown russ wilson has 18 red zone passing attempts goodness and zero passing touchdowns in the red zone that is atypical for russell wilson including with that one that got called back with sutton and that's the, the thing he barely so, touched the uh looking, sideline yeah looking at all the eight we had the team go through look at all the 18 red zone passing attempts so you have uh, you have four would-be touchdowns where the receiver caught it but didn't get both feet down. 
uh, you know, a lot of conservative checking downs and two delay of games. This is where I was talking about the, the coaching staff not being comfortable, all being brand new in their roles. I think that is – that's where the, the problems start for me is that the coaching is is too new and they will get better as time goes along. I don't know how long that will take. That could be like a half a season thing before these guys start feeling comfortable, being more confident, getting their play calls in on time so that the team isn't scrambled. Russ Wilson gets the play, has enough time to – to absorb that information, check out the field, see if he needs to alter anything. And then hand the ball off to Javante Williams. <laughs> sure. But there's just there's a lot of weird stuff going on in the red zone that I don't think continues all year long. It, unfortunately, though, could continue for at least a few more weeks. Do you agree with that, Jason? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I do. I think, that, uh, I think that analysis is right. There's a lot of coaching mishaps going on, and – is because it, everything is brand new, you, it, it needs a little bit more time to figure out what to do, especially in the red zone. They look inept in the red zone. Yeah. And the the home crowd calling out the play clock <laughs> like it's a Giannis I field goal attempt. Was Giannis. <laughs> which, man, we've been there. We've been oh. at the Suns game uh, counting down Giannis. Yeah, but you do throw. it to the other team. <laughs> <laughs> that's true well you, but this is helping your team this is like guys the crowd you gotta is, get the ball that is one really fun and yeah. two really sad yes. well it, are we giving too much credit or uh the benefit of the doubt to nathaniel hackett and that staff to figure it out whereas i don't remember us giving the benefit of the doubt to like chicago and eberflus and figuring out that offense to throw the ball more than 11 times or is that you it's, know that's dysfunction that we think will continue but with. I think it's just a matter of the talent on the field. When you've got Russell Wilson, the history of him being great, and you've got him to help you sure. figure it out, that's sure. where I have more trust in, in that situation. All right, let's get into the uh, Thursday night preview. Thursday night breakdown. Well, gentlemen, let's analyze a over-under of 38 points. The Pittsburgh Steelers at 1-1. One one. Traveling to take on the Cleveland Browns at one and one. The DraftKings Sportsbook line Cleveland minus four and a half. Since twenty seventeen, games with a closing line of thirty eight or lower hit the under fifty four percent of the time. And have made people vomit seventy five percent of the time. <laughs> people are fantasy players, Mike. I well, when I say people, I mean it's one That's of the a, same. One yeah. of the same. Um last year, let me give you the Two uh, scores from these matchups. Week eight, Pittsburgh won a thriller, 15 to 10. Oh, barn burner. And in week 17, they really stepped it up, 26 to 14. Okay, okay. I'll take 26 points. Yeah, I mean, in the context of their other <laughs> matchups, maybe that is good. But this is Mitch Trubisky versus Jacoby Brissett, that, which is our, what, 31st and 30th ranked quarterbacks on the week? They're at uh, the bottom. So who's below Mitch? Somebody vet that, because if we've got 30 and 31, I just want to know who's below these two. Yeah, who's worse? Uh, Cooper Rush. Okay. Jacoby Bruce. Wait, oh, we said Brissett. It's Cooper. Okay, yeah. Cooper Rush. Yeah. So that, I feel like I should move him up. <laughs> Which one? Cooper. <laughs> the the pa Neither of these teams, or sorry, neither of these quarterbacks has a passing line set above 200 yards. And so your first task here, gentlemen, is to distribute less than 100 yards passing or sorry, less than 200 yards passing to the various weapons on these rosters and find a pathway for, for joy. Well, that's why like Pat Fryermuth is okay because most tight ends don't get a lot of work. So you don't need a ton for him to be okay for the position. The other, you know, the wide receivers, like, okay, Deontay Johnson, he's been getting the targets. He's still a double-digit target machine. He's clearly the number one in this offense. That's great. Even still, with double-digit targets, he hasn't been a top 24 wide receiver in either of the first two weeks. I don't know how often he is a top 24 wide receiver. So, uh, I mean, it's he's Jacoby Myers. <laughs> we don't want to say it because he's way better than Jacoby Myers. Sure. Uh, you, I just got Jacoby Myers off the waivers, and if you're telling me, oh, congratulations. what did you? Uh, what was your investment there? Uh, four fab dollars. Okay, that's a, that's that's worth it. Yeah, you know, I was curious what people were going to spend. I saw him on there. I didn't need him myself, so I did not compete with you. But sure. four four is uh, four is fine, and yeah. and you know, it's if Deontay Johnson was on the waivers, what 
Cody go for well, it. They, they, and I know that's yeah, not fair. Yeah, I don't really Deontay's, agree with that. But. Deontay's been a, a much more prolific uh, receiver. He is clearly better. Top 10 last year. But as far as in this current world yes. with uh, Mitch Trubisky and the struggling offense. That's fair. You know, he just seems like a volume PPR play that is a talented wide receiver who's still going to be disappointing. You're going to play him. Outside of him, you're not playing any other, you know, Chase Claypool, nope. George Pickens. Uh -uh. George Pickens shouldn't even be on your roster at this point. He's a talented wide receiver who's on the field, and he'll have a big play or two going forward, but not someone you could ever start with reliability. And and I think that those guys are all better than the wide receiver options on the Browns. Najee was better last week. Yeah, I mean, Najee's in your lineup. Najee, too when, much volume yeah, for a running back. Exactly. He had uh, 21 opportunities last week, which was five more attempts than week one, and five catches, which is the thing that you really wanted to see. Running back scoring was so pathetic last week. Najee had 11.4 points, and he was the running back 13. That's what the, the that's, dude had 15 carries for 49 yards and five catches for 40 yards. How many touchdowns? Zero. And he was almost the running back one. That's where just stating how somebody finished on the week is a, a kind of a disorienting thing. It doesn't tell the truth necessarily. Well, what mean, that tells me is <laughs> the running backs were terrible. You they were probably disappointed in Najee last week sure. compared to what you got last year. Collectively, and you ended up with almost an RB one. So that's really the story. Um, on the other side, Nick Chubb, you know, once again He's leads the beast. NFL in forced missed tackles. Three he, touchdowns last week. He is a beast. The The touchdowns, I mean, is fabulous when you get a three-touchdown game from Nick Chubb. The touchdowns will, I think, continue to jump back and forth between him and Kareem Hunt. Uh, I mean, I'd much rather have Nick Chubb. I'm not saying that I want to play Kareem Hunt over him, but it's just the, the story continues for them. But Kareem Hunt was, because running backs were so bad, was still the running back 24 without scoring. 15 opportunities in both weeks. That's what you like to see, consistency for Kareem Hunt as the second man up. Amari Cooper, big bounce back week yeah, big last week. Back. Nine for 101 and one. 25% targets per route run through two weeks, 10 targets. It is Amari and no one else in the passing game for me. Yeah, it's yep. Deontay and Amari, and honestly, they're pretty close to each other and in in this game and then that's it and then check out log off so the total implied point total is uh i got one more for you jason total implied point total is 21 to 16 browns uh which defense do you prefer in this game oh that is a that is a legit See? question yeah i mean they're, they're both in play they're they're definitely both in play i'm playing cleveland we we should mention uh for Cleveland Miles Garrett wasn't practicing on Tuesday. That's gonna be a problem for me. So we don't know. Oh, and I, I thought that was Clowney. That was Garrett. No, Clowney, Clowney's already Clowney's out. Clowney's already out. Oh my goodness, Garrett and Clowney. Yeah. So I, Mitch I, Mitch cannot take advantage of that. That uh, is true. Well, I'm not saying Mitch. I, yeah, this isn't like oh get the Steelers in. It's I might back away from the Cleveland Browns if both of those guys are out. Well, one of them's out for sure, and the other one and Miles might be out. So monitor that. Well, that, that's kind of my point, though. I don't think that Mitch Trubisky can take advantage of that on the road to the degree that I'd be afraid of the Browns' defense. But you're uh, not going to get – like your opportunity for sacks and things like that goes yeah, way it's, down. Yeah. It's not saying yeah. that the Steelers' offense is going to be good. It's that the fantasy defense of the Browns also won't be good. That's my concern. Okay. Yeah, I mean, last week they certainly poo-pooed away the game against the – Oh, my goodness, did they? New York Jets. Uh, would you play the Cleveland defense – or would you play, um, let me see here, T uh, the Green Bay defense against Tampa? In Tampa. Uh, That's Cleveland. interesting. Cleveland. Or the Giants defense against Dallas and Cooper Rush on Monday Night Football, which is at home. Mm, I think I, I'm sticking with Cleveland. In yeah, the, in I'd, I'd go them over the Giants, but I'd play Dallas over Cleveland, I think. Certainly. Uh, uh, just off the top of my head. Is Chubb the number one running back on the year? Yep. Well, I mean, when you go – <laughs> Three touchdowns last week. He was week. a beast. Yeah. Yeah, he was. I mean, he always has been. 87 rushing yards. You trade him high? No. I don't. I Well, th let's th let's talk about all the underwhelmers. Okay. Right? Dalvin Cook. I would I would rather have Cook. I'd, I'd rather have Dalvin Cook, yes. Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, oh, of Christian course. Christian McCaffrey. Um, Derrick Henry. Oh, man. That's a really good... That's a tough question. It shouldn't be because it should automatically be Derrick Henry. That one hurts. But 
That one hurts because the other two were so easy. And then you got to a guy that's on my league of rest record. Austin roster. Eckler. Austin Eckler. I'd, I'd much rather have just the pass catching. Um, you know, when you go Derrick Henry, you're actually kind of going apples to apples. And you've got to have a. I just wanted to name another league of record running back for you. <laughs> a pure running back that can get game scripted out. You know, I, I've talked about Chubb is not always a great play. Uh, often games, he's he's just he lets your fancy team down, and um, I, I don't think he's going to this week. Last week was a great matchup, but it's very similar for Derrick Henry. And one of these guys looks like they've clearly still got all the juice you're used to seeing and the offensive line you're used to seeing. That is a tough question. That's I, uh, My biggest concern for Derrick Henry is the offensive line because it's like, if you can get to Henry before he gets going, he it it's nothing. And they and now, uh, th man, the 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 lack of AJ Brown, I think that's a, I think it's going to be a even larger uh, deficit. I can't think of the word I want to use, but it just a a larger impairment to this team than even I thought it would be. That was, and, a, good, and, that was a good word. Impairment was, very, was a great word. We very I agree. Impressive for being lost. Yeah. Being lost in your words and yes. then coming up with impairment there. I was you did way better than I did trying to figure out the back half of DeAndre Swift's joke. Uh, yeah. Well, jokes are tough. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> uh, <laughs> listen to this. Uh, the top 12 running backs have scored the fewest combined points of the last seven years and the third lowest since 1999. <laughs> there were only 10 teams <laughs> through weeks one and two that handed the ball off to the same running back 20 times. Um, so that's over two weeks. That's the second lowest mark of the last 20 years. That was in the Matt DeSorbo article today. I did not hear what you said. Was it anti Derrick Henry? It was, no, it was just uh, anti running back. The it's zero, why we feel this way. The zero running back teams are pantsless running through the streets right now. Our, uh, just pointing in our face. It's not listener league. One of my leagues, I went full wide receivers. Tyreek Hill. Oof. Um, Justin Jefferson and uh, AJ Brown. That feels pretty good. And uh, my pants are off. Yeah. Oh yeah. My uh, <laughs> my four and O Mega Bowl team um I, is the same thing. Devonte Adams, Stephon Diggs, T Higgins, just booty shaking. Uh, 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 you know. You want to know when that great. works? That works really, really well when everybody struggles at running back at the same time. So you you have that roster and you're in there and you're going. Boy, Najee Harris stunk this week, and then your opponents got Dalvin Cook, and you're like, "Well, this is just—it's just all washing out." And then my wide receivers lead the way. When you have a, you know, a handful of at least monster running backs that are doing the job, it gets harder to overcome with a J.D. McKissick as your running back too. We need to um, monitor all this discussion on the offensive line and Derrick Henry reminded me of Terry. impressive. Yeah, yeah, I didn't like it. Impressive. Um, but the Taylor Lewan injury that was feared to be lost for the season i i haven't seen an update as to whether I or didn't, not i didn't never have I, that fear yeah i didn't hear when, that when did we get that did fear? you start that uh um, are you starting that right now i am receiving it right now as i've been looking into the injury so, i have i have it, i thought it was just a minor so wait issue. what have what have you received uh 17 hours ago report titans fear taylor lawan is out for the season uh mm. three hours ago it's from jason's twitter re reviewing all options as they wait more information okay on yeah wow. i was not aware of that how are you feeling about Derrick Henry? I am feeling like nervous. I, I am feeling very more nervous, nervous about Derrick than Eckler. Uh, it, yeah, Equally without, nervous. I mean, their their offensive line already went backwards. If you lose Taylor Lewan, who's a phenomenal left tackle, um, it's not getting better. It doesn't like help this bit right. struggling offense. Okay. Oh man, do I trade him? Do I trade him? Do I? I'll take him? him. Yeah, we can we can talk. Do you have Christian McCaffrey? I'll swap ski. Uh, oh, I have Christian McCaffrey. Oh, Swapsky. I will not make that oh, deal. darn it. All right, that is going wait, to wait, do wait. it. I'll give you Jeff Wilson. Wait, wait, wait. Come on. <laughs> oh, ah! you got it. You son of a gun, I'm in. <laughs> FootClanGiveaway.com. Head over there. <laughs> Bunch of great stuff we're giving away. Check it out. Tomorrow we'll be back with Starts of the Week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.